Hello everyone, in this section here we'll go over the solutions for the Lecture 2 review questions posted in the quiz generator. So the first question I asked was, with logistic regression, what is being estimated as a linear function of our predictor x, regardless of whether x is binary, categorical, or continuous? In other words, what is on the left-hand side of the equation? So recall all regressions, simple regressions we've talked about have this generic format or something close to it. We have some intercept type thing and some slope times our predictor. Sometimes we'll have more than one x if our predictor is categorical in a simple regression framework. And the only thing that changes depending on our variable type for the outcome is what the function on the left hand side looks like. And for logistic regression we start our y variable is binary, so 1 or 0, indicating whether somebody has the outcome or not, and the scale we modeled on on the linear scale is the log odds of y equaling 1. So p equals the probability or proportion of persons with y equal to 1 in each group defined by x. So suppose a simple logistic regression is estimated to relate the condition of having high LDL cholesterol levels to current smoking status in a random sample of young adults. So we have a model that looks like this. The log odds of high cholesterol level. There's a clinical cutoff to determine this. High LDL is equal to some intercept. Estim and we'll estimate it based on the sample time some estimated slope times our x, which is a 1 for smokers and a 0 for not. So what is being estimated by the intercept here? Well, in generic linear equations, the intercept estimates the value on the left-hand side when all of our x's are 0. We only have one x here, and if it's 0, it actually defines a group in our study, those who are not currently smoking at the time of the study. So this intercept estimates the log odds of high cholesterol level, log odds of high cholesterol level, I'll just abbreviate that with HCL, for the non-smokers. And it's the estimate, or it's the log odds for the non-smokers in this sample, which is an estimate for the log odds in the population from which this sample was taken. So. And it's an estimate of log odds for the non-smokers in the population of young adults. So suppose uh, we still have this simple logistic regression that we looked at before with the log odds of high cholesterol level equal to some intercept plus some slope times our binary x in this case. And I asked you what was being estimated by the slope. Well, recall, and we could write this out, and I encourage you to do so if you're still working through this, but the slope estimates the difference in the left-hand side, in this case the log odds of high cholesterol level, for any two groups who differ by one unit in x. But when x is binary, there's only two groups, the ones and the zeros, and they differ by one unit. So beta 1 estimates the difference in log odds of high cholesterol level for the non- for the smokers in the sample compared to the non-smokers. And we've seen that a difference in log odds can be re-expressed as the log of the odds ratio of the outcome. So the odds ratio of high cholesterol level for those coded with next equals one smokers compared to non-smokers. So, let's look at a specific example with numbers now. Suppose a simple logistic regression is estimated to relate the condition of having high LDL cholesterol levels to current smoking status in this random sample of young adults, and we actually get numbers for this beta naught hat and beta one hat, and we get an estimated equation based on our sample that the log odds of high cholesterol level is equal to negative 1.9 plus 0.31 times our smoking variable. So what is the estimated odds ratio of high cholesterol for smokers compared to non-smokers? 
Well, beta 1 here equals that slope of x is 0.31, and we've already defined that as an estimate of the log odds ratio of high cholesterol levels for smokers to non-smokers. So if we wanted to get an odds ratio estimate for this association in the population of young adults, we'd exponentiate our slope to get an odds ratio. And if we do so, we get an estimated odds ratio of 1.36. So we estimate that in this population from which the sample was taken, and based on what we see in our sample, that smokers at the time of the study had 36% higher odds of having high LDL cholesterol level as compared to non-smokers. But that's a relative comparison. It doesn't really give us some sense of the starting probabilities for these two groups. So let's work that out. So let's look at the same logistic regression model. And let's estimate the probability of having high cholesterol level among smokers in the sample. And so recall, we can do this for any one group. We can substitute the x value into our equation and get a predicted value. So for smokers, it's their x is equal to 1. So we get the log odds of high cholesterol level for this single group, the smokers. is equal to our intercept negative 1.9 plus that slope 0.31 and if you do the math here this is equal to negative 1.59 and so this is our log odds to get the odds for this single group the odds of high cholesterol level for the single group of smokers we'd exponentiate our log odds and we get something about 2.2 or 4 if you take it out the three decimal places those are the estimated odds of high cholesterol level for the smokers in the sample as an estimate for the smokers in this population of young adults to get the corresponding probability of proportion estimate we take our odds and divide it by the 1 plus the odds which is equal to 0 0.204 over 1.204 and if you do the math that's approximately 0.169 or 0.17 if you round so about 17 percent of the smokers in the sample have high cholesterol level. Suppose we instead, I mean it was arbitrary to compare to code this x as a 1 for smokers and a 0 for non-smokers. We could have done it in the other direction as well. What would the resulting intercept and in slope be for this model? Well, in this new approach, I'll call it x star equals 0 for non -smoke, uh, for smokers our intercept, I'll call it beta not star to indicate it's different than the previous one, would estimate the log odds for smokers, which we've already seen to be negative 1.59 from that previous computation. And one for non-smokers would be the entire association, the log odds would be that negative 1.9, which was our previous intercept when x was coded to 0 for non-smokers. So that means our slope would have to be whatever we add to negative 1.59 to get negative 1.9, which is negative 0.31. And well, maybe you attack this from a different direction, which would be very logical. In this direction, when x is 1 for non-smokers and 0 for smokers, the beta 1 compares the log odds of non-smokers to smokers, the difference or the ratio, which would just be the opposite of the value in the previous direction. So this slope in this reformulation is just the opposite, the negative value of the previous slope. So now let's look at the example we had in the lecture relating the log odds of being breastfed to age in months for our sample of children, Nepali children, 12 to 36 months old. So remember the log odds for a given age, now x is continuous, measured in months, was take, start with 7.3 and add negative 0.24 times the age in months. So uh, just to get us started, let's estimate the probability of being breastfed among 12 month olds in the sample as an estimate for that in the population. Or in other words, the estimated proportion of 12-month-olds who are breastfed. But what we're going to do here is we want to estimate the outcome, not a comparison between groups, but the outcome for a single group. So we'll start on the log odds scale. So the log odds when x is 12 months is equal to 7.3 plus negative 0.24 
times 12, if you do out the math, you get 4.42. That's the log odds. So if we, to get the odds for this group, we'll exponentiate 4.42, and that's approximately equal. It's a large number, 83.1. So to get the probability or proportion, we will take the odds of 83.1 over 1 plus the odds, which would be 84.1, and that's equal to 0. 0.9. 8, 8, or I'm just going to round the two decimals, 0.99. So almost 100%, 99% of the 12 month olds in the sample are breastfed as estimated by the results from this logistic regression model. Let's do the same thing but estimate it for 24 month olds. So we'd use the same approach to get the log odds for 24 month olds, but we'd instead substitute 24 for our age variable. So we take 7.3 plus our slope of negative 0.24 times 24, which is the age group we're looking at. And you can verify my math if you wish, but when the dust settles, this comes out to be 1.54. So to get the odds, we'd exponentiate that, exponentiate 1.54, which is equal to approximately 4.66. And if we then take the ratio to get the estimated probability proportion of 4.66 to 5.66, this estimated probability is about 82 percent, 0.82. So substantially smaller, it's still a large proportion, a little over four-fifths, but it's notably lower than the 99 percent estimate we got for the group one year younger or 12 months younger. So then, using this, let's, let's compare something about the chances of being breastfed for these two groups. And let's first start with the odds ratio. We've just estimated the proportion, so we'll do the relative risk as well. But let's first estimate the odds ratio of being breastfed among 24-month-olds compared to 12-month-olds. So we'll do this a long way in the short way, but if we were to write this out on the, you know, if we actually wrote out what we had done before, back to back, the odds for x equals 12 is equal to, or pardon me, x equals 24. I'll do the larger age first, negative 0.24 times 24. And we've already done these computations, so this is redundant, but it helps to just see the patterns, I think. For 12 months, we do 7.3 plus negative 0.24 times 12. And if we actually take that difference, we get this intercept disappears and we get 12, the difference in 24 minus 12 times that slope of negative 0.24. So that's the log odds ratio. It's the difference in the log odds or the log odds ratio being breastfed for 12, 24 month olds to 12 month olds. So to get the odds ratio, we would just exponentiate this. So we exponentiate 12 times negative 0.24, and that will give us 0.056, nearly 0 0.06. So that says that the 24-month-olds have nearly 94% lesser odds of being breastfed than the 12 month olds. 94% reduction. Let's look at that on the relative risk scale though. This is interesting. So on the relative risk scale, remember our estimated proportion of children who are being breastfed among the 24 month olds was 82%, 0.82, and among the 12 year olds, 12 month olds was 99%. On the relative risk scale, this is still indicates a reduction as, as it should. But on the relative risk scale, this looks rather tepid compared to the odds ratio. On the relative risk scale, we have a 17% reduction in risk. So this is an example of where the odds ratio and relative risk will certainly agree in terms of the same direction of association, but the magnitude of the 
associations can be very different on these two scales. And if we were sloppy about calling our odds ratio the relative risk, we would really overstate the reduction on the risk scale. Okay, so now let's, we know that the, or I'm reporting now that the standard error for this estimated slope is 0 0.037. So we want to just get a 95% confidence interval for the true population level smoke, slope. And that's a classic. Take our estimate and add and subtract two estimated standard errors, which we've been given, and we would get from the computer. And in fact, the computer would do this computation for us, but it's nice just to recall where it comes from and the continuity with what we did in the first term. If you do out the math, the estimated confidence interval on the slope scale or the log odds ratio scale is between negative 0.314 and negative 0.166. So notice that all possibilities for this log odds ratio are negative, it does not include the null value of zero. Now I want you to do get the confidence interval for the population odds ratio being breast oval. We have the endpoints from before for the log odds ratio of the negative 0.314 and the negative 0.166. If we just exponentiate these, we will get the 95% confidence interval for the odds ratio. And if you do that, you get a confidence interval with rounding from 0.73 to 0.85. So each additional month of age is associated with a reduction on the order of anywhere from 27% from to 15% after accounting for sampling variability. That's per one month. And now I ask you to use this result to estimate the 95% confidence interval for the true population odds ratio of being breastfed for 24-month-old children to 12-month-old children. Well, there's a couple different ways to do this. Um, remember, our estimate for the odds ratio was 0 0.056. But if we did this on the starting with the log scale, so our odds ratio estimate was 0 0.056, but we want a confidence interval for this. Well, recall on the log odds ratio scale, the confidence interval for a one-unit difference was negative 0.314 to negative 0 0.166. Um, if we wanted the confidence interval for a 5 unit, for a 12 unit difference, pardon me, 12 unit difference from 24 to 12 month olds, we just take these endpoints just like we did with the slope and multiply them each by 12. And that would give us a confidence interval for the odds ratio comparing 24 month olds to 12 month olds since the difference in age was 12 months. And then we'd exponentiate these endpoints. So we'd exponentiate these to get the confidence interval for the odds ratio for this comparison. And if we did that, we'd get a confidence interval that went from about 0.02 to 0.14. A shortcut to this, uh, the math you know, you can disentangle this math here. So let me just show you, for example, this lower endpoint here is equal e to the 12 times negative 0.314. So this is the lower endpoint for us. The math here is this is equal to e to the negative 0.314, just rearranging it, raised to the 12th power, the difference in the ages we're comparing. But e to the negative 0.314, we already established that's the lower endpoint of the confidence interval for the odds ratio comparing a one month difference in age. So a shortcut here, such that we don't have to go back to the regression scale once we have the endpoints for the confidence interval for one unit difference in x, is we can just take those endpoints and raise them to the difference in x for this comparison. So 0 0.75 to the 12th is approximately equal to 0 0.02. And if you did the same thing for the other endpoint of 0.85 and raised it to the 12th power, you'd get that same estimated value of 0.14. All right, so if you have further questions, please feel free to post these on the BBS and we can discuss. Thank you.